you in the life of Simon Peter. Um, and I hope you have enjoyed these, uh, the series in the life of Simon Peter. Uh, I know I have. I've just the more I study about him, the, the more I realize that Peter did more damage to himself than the Lord ever could do by opening his mouth and inserting his foot. You know, I've heard that, you know, told you about that. But it dawned on me quite heavily this week that James and John are assimilated or kind of with Peter everywhere he goes. You always hear about Peter, James, and John, Peter, James, and John, you know. But James and John never opens their mouth. I just, uh, just, it's amazing to me. I guess Peter didn't want him to talk. He was a spokesman. So again today, we're going to look at uh, the life of Peter, and I want to give you a little lesson in humility today. And we find it in John chapter 13, verse 4 through 9. <clears throat> John chapter 13, verse 4 through 9. <clears throat> so he, that is Jesus, got up from the table, took off his robe and wrapped a towel around his waist and poured water into a basin. Then he began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with a towel he had around him. When Je Jesus came to, here he is, Simon Peter, <clears throat> Peter said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus replied, you don't understand now what I'm doing, but someday you will. No, Peter protested, you will never wash my feet. And Jesus replied this, unless I wash your feet, you won't belong to me. And Simon Peter exclaimed, then wash my hands and my head as well, Lord, not just my feet. Let's pray. Father, we're looking to you for help this morning. I pray, Lord, today that the Holy Spirit would speak through my lips. May your word go out to its truth. We ask these blessings today in Jesus' name. Now, this message isn't just about foot washing. There are those who have foot washing services, and I commend them. I have a dear friend. Uh, he was explaining to me his church about foot washing. But this scripture, and my buddy agreed with me, isn't about washing feet or about taking a bath. It's about humility, and that's what it's all about. So you got that too loud and too low. So... The, the story here is this morning, in Luke chapter 9, we will find the disciples having an argument about who was the greatest among them. All 12 disciples were arguing, I'm going to be the greatest in the kingdom of God. And so this week, we're going to find out who the greatest in the kingdom, God's, God's kingdom was. If you want a clue, I'll just tell you this. It's the humble person. That's what Jesus is going to teach this morning. And Jesus was saying to them, you're sitting here jockeying to find out who's going to temporarily be the head of my church or temporarily uh, be the, the big guy and, and the kingdom work. And you're so self-centered and consumed with self-interest that you're missing the biggest picture. You're missing the point of what it ought to be about. And the key word in our text this morning was so. So Jesus got up from the table, took off his outer garment, and wrapped a towel around his waist, and got a bowl of water. And before all the disciples got down on his hands and knees and washed their feet. As I was reading about this this morning, or this week rather, I was kind of amazed that not one of the other disciples said anything about Jesus washing his feet. I don't, we, we don't have any scripture of James or John or Philip, or any of them 
saying a thing until the Lord comes to Peter. And here he is. I like Peter. I've used the terminology, open mouth, insert feet for Peter. And here he is again. And as he, as he watched Jesus going down the line, washing feet and drying their feet, he comes to Peter and Peter asked the question to the Lord, are you going to wash my feet? As if I'm, I'm too good for you to wash my feet. Or I'm, you're too good to wash my feet. Whatever Peter was thinking, I don't know. But I do know this, that he, he kind of reprimanded the Lord for washing, wanting to wash his feet. And Jesus got it down to the point where he said, Peter, if I can't wash your feet, then you have no part in my kingdom. What was he saying there? He was saying this, Peter, if you're not willing to humble yourself like I am now, you will not be a part of my kingdom. You catch that? What Jesus was doing was an out reminder of an inward truth in saying, I'm here to serve. Jesus was two weeks out of going to trial, two weeks out of going to the cross. And he's trying to convey to his disciples, you guys, I have given you one truth after another truth, and we've studied them in this, this series on on uh, Peter's life, but here is the truth getting down to the last hour, and this is one of the last messages Jesus is giving his disciples, you need to be humble. It's not about who's the greatest in the kingdom of God. It's not about you, but it's about who's willing to serve me. Here at Ellsark View Chapel, are you here to serve? others? That's just a question I'm going to throw. I won't charge you for that. But we're all, if we're God's children, we're all a part of the service corps. We're all a part of, of behind the scenes many times just serving. Do you know that one of the the uh, the gifts that was given are the ministries that was given from Paul in, in I think it's 1 Corinthians when he's talking about the gifts of God, some to healing, some to prophecy. One of the gifts that overlooked many times is the gift of helps. You have to be humble to take this lower part, to just to help. Now these guys lived in a, a dusty world. There wasn't paved streets. Everywhere they went, they walked. I don't, except one occasion, Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, but most of the time they were just walking, had sandals on, and their feet got dirty. And the people who, when they came to a house, the people who washed their feet, you couldn't go into a house without a servant being designated to come wash your feet. It's relaxing, it's cleansing. I mean, but the lowest of the household, the servants, and this was what Jesus was taking on when he was teaching his disciples. So today I want to share with you the thought of humility. And there's, I will touch on it quickly, and, and you just you listen quick, and I'll talk quick, and we'll get out of here, okay? Humility through example. We, we found it. He that is Jesus, began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that he had around him. In his humility, Jesus showed them how to love one another. It would take quite a bit of love to be able to do this. And I'm not opposed to it. I'm just saying that it goes beyond just the fact of washing feet, but rather being humble enough to love each other. And so Jesus reveals his love through his humility, and he's giving that to his disciples. So washing feet wasn't just about washing feet. 
but it was a, a ministry of love. So in John chapter 13, verse 1, Jesus knew that his hour had come to leave this world and return to his Father. He had loved his disciples during his ministry on earth. Now he loved them to the very end. When you become a Christian, love is one of the major stabilities in your life along with prayer and faith and all those other things. But we can't be Christians. We can't show Christianity. We can't be humble without showing love. And so there he is. John 15, 9 through 15 says, I have loved you even as the Father hath loved me. Love one another. And I'm not going to read this whole passage. But in the final, he said in verse 15, this is my commandment love one another. Sometimes we have to lower ourselves from who we think we are to who God has made us so that we can love each other. So we have love through example that Jesus gave, and then we have love through submission. Peter said, you're not going to wash my feet. Jesus said, okay, but if you don't let me wash your feet, so we, you, you need to submit to me, Peter. Give your all to me. Let me wash your feet. And so when Jesus gave him that word, Peter said, okay, Lord, you can wash my feet, but wash my hands and my face. And too. In other words, give me a bath. He wanted what Jesus was giving. So... Um, Matthew Henry gives us, and he's, Matthew Henry is a commentator, gives us four reasons why Jesus did this. That he might testify about his love to his disciples. That he might give an ins, uh, instance of his own voluntary humility and condensation. I mean, he, he lowered himself to the place of a servant that he might signify to them spiritual washing of sins was needed goes beyond foot washing but the total body that he might set them an example about being a servant humility is about servitude when we find peter peter's trying to tell him what he could do and couldn't do you remember i i won't get into it just go ahead and wash all of me lord then the last thing i want to talk about is Humility in action. Verse 15, Jesus said, I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. Be a servant to others. And then in verse 17, now that you know these things, now listen to this, God will bless you in doing them. In other words, if you humble yourselves to become a servant of the Lord, he's going to bless you. I don't know how he's going to bless you, but I have found out through the years that God's got ways of blessing people that I never think of. Amen? Jesus said, if you'll humble yourselves and be a servant to me, you will be blessed. Service to others through love. Verse 34 and 35, so now I'm giving you a new, new commandment. Love each other just as I've loved you. You should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. When you show humility, it proves to the world that you are my disciples. Now, Carla talked about the Good Samaritan story, and that's a dynamic illustration of what I'm talking about this morning. He came and humbled himself the others just passed him by, just passed him by. But here he is, the Good Samaritan, started in trying to help the man. And he not only helped him to a place of rest and rest uh, to get restored, but he said, I'll pay the rest of it. Jesus did that for us. And we're to try to help other people. And Jesus said to the disciples, go and do the same. It's talking about the Good Samaritans. Go and show your love. Humble yourselves before others. It's not about us. 
Let's close this morning. This is a great desire, my desire, to serve the Lord. And it'll be on the board. Would you stand with me, please? Bible study at 5 o'clock tonight. Ooh. Fellowship Hall. Okay.